Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So first of all, two quick announcements before we get started. Firstly, this video is part of a course that I developed on Kotlin design patterns, where I cover a lot of the commonly used design patterns and some less commonly used ones. Um, it's very useful for your Kotlin and Android development. I've spent more than a month building the course and over 10 years gathering the knowledge for it. Um, it's getting some very positive reviews, so do check it out, link with a discount in the description. Second, if you're not interested in the course, but you still want to support my work, I have set up a Patreon account. If you like the free content I'm putting out, please consider supporting me there. All right, so that's all for the announcements. Now let's get on with the video. All right, everyone, so let's talk about the adapter pattern. Now, if you've worked with Kotlin before, and especially on Android development, you will probably be familiar with the adapter pattern simply because it's used quite often in Android. But let's go through it and see what it is, how we can construct it, and of course, put it in practice as well. So basically, the adapter converts the interface of a class into another interface that the client expects, right? So you can think about it as you have two different sets of classes that both have a certain interface. And by interface, we can mean the explicit interface um, component or part of the class, or it can simply mean the methods that are available, right? If you want to formalize it, you create interfaces. If you don't need to formalize it or you don't really um, have that option in the uh, client class, then you don't necessarily need the interface, but it's quite a useful concept to think about it in that way. So basically, it converts an interface into another interface. That is the adapter. It basically adapts your code to the requirements of a third party library. It can also convert data from one format into another. Okay, so if your um, client library requires data in a certain format, then your data must be converted, must be adapted to the requirements of the third party class. And the adapter pattern is used extensively in Android. So you have definitely seen this in action um, in Android, if you've worked with Android, obviously, it is quite a useful pattern. So let me just go into an Android studio and just show you this as an example. Okay, so here I have a project that I actually built um, in another course, in a separate uh, course. By the way, if you're interested to see how we built this and how we work with uh, this particular adapter, um, you can find the link to that course in the uh, attached to this video. So basically, this is a country list adapter. What we are doing in this project is we're simply retrieving a bunch of data from a third, um, from an endpoint, okay, from an internet endpoint, and displaying it in uh, our application, right? So obviously, the data that comes back from the endpoint is going to be different from the data that we need in order to display it. So that is why we have a country list adapter that basically converts my data, which is the list of countries, into a recycler view adapter. Okay, so you've obviously um, worked with this before. If you haven't, check out that link here. So obviously, this country list adapter will then be used. Uh, let me see where we use it here. We use it as an adapter to um, convert the data that we receive. Okay, so we update the countries here. We pass the data. The adapter itself um, converts that data into the right format and displays it. Okay, so this is the adapter pattern applied in Android development. So let's have a look in a very simple way at what the adapter is in this very abstract schema. So let's say we have a third party library that has a class. We're going to call this adaptee. Okay, this is the class that we're going to adapt to. Okay, so this has, let's say, a specific call. This is the interface, right? We have a function. Obviously, we cannot modify this. This is a third party library. And even if it was our own library, we don't want to modify it in order to attach it strongly to this other part of our code. We want to keep the parts separated to have uh, separation of concerns, right? So we're gonna keep this class as it is. And here we have our local development, right? We have our local code, we have our target for the client, and this has a certain 
interface as well. This we're going to call this call. Now, how do we call? How do we make the uh, connection between these two? Obviously, the call cannot simply call this specific call, right? There is a difference in functionality here. So obviously, we need an adapter class. Okay, in the simplest way possible, the call function will do some processing inside the adapter in order to convert that information so that it can call this interface of the adaptee. Okay, that is the basic functionality of the adapter. That is the most simple way you can think about an adapter. So in order to put this in practice and give you a useful um, information here, we're going to go to our uh, development environment, okay, in the IntelliJ. And let's go ahead and create a class. So I'm going to create a new Kotlin file, and I'm going to call this adapter. Okay, so here we will begin by um, constructing the third party library classes. Okay, so I'm going to make this, uh, let's say, third party functionality, let's say. So this, once we build it, we cannot modify because it's third party. So here, let's say our third party functionality um, can display some data in a certain way, right? So let's create a data class. Um, let's say, let's say display data type. Okay, and this has two parameters. So val index as a float, and let's say val data as a string. Okay, so this is my data that I need in order to display on this third party library. So next up, we're going to have a class data display. Okay. And this um, will have a function display data that takes a data of type data display type. I'm going to just call this data, it makes more sense. And let's say we simply display the data. So we're just going to print line um, data is displayed. And let's uh, do some, um, let's print out some information. So data dot, let's say index dash data dot data. Okay, so easy enough, we're going to assume that this is displayed to some sort of UI, which will be for us the console. Okay, so this is the third party functionality up until this point. And then from this point on, we have our code. Okay, so um, let's say that we have a separate data type in our code. Okay, so I'm going to create a data class. Um, let's say this data comes from the database. So I'm going to say database data. And this has two parameters. So let's say it has val position as an integer, and then val, let's say amount, maybe there's some uh, financial information in this database. And this is also an integer. Alright, so here we have a class uh, database data generator that simply generates this type of data that we need. So it has a function called uh, generate data that returns us a list of uh, database data. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this functionality. So val list equals array list of uh, database data. Okay, list dot add, let's create an element, database data, let's say two and two, let's duplicate this twice. And I'm going to say three, and seven. And here we have four and 23. Okay, so we have that and then we're going to return the list. Okay, so simple enough, we're just generating some random data, we can assume that this will be um, data that comes from a database. Okay, so we have that. Now, what we want to do is we want to display this data, this list to our display here, okay, to use the third party functionality. So how do we do that? Obviously, we cannot simply call this display data with the, uh, the list that we receive from here. So we have to have an adapter to adapt between uh, our code and the third party functionality. Now let's go ahead and create an interface for our adapter. So I'm going to say interface database 
uh, let's capitalize this database data converter. Okay, and this has a function called convert data that takes the data from the database. So data as a list of database data and returns a list. Let's say we also return a list. We don't have to return anything here, but I just want to return it so that uh, we can do some checking in our tests. Okay, so display data, uh, display data uh, type. Okay, so we're getting this, this type of data back. Okay, so this will simply be so that we can do some testing, but here we don't actually need to return anything. This will simply convert the data and call the functionality. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our adapter class. Um, data display adapter of val display. So we get the data display here. Okay, so we're receiving the instance of the display from the third party library. And here we have the interface database data converter. Okay, obviously we need to uh, implement that functionality. So we have convert data, we need to convert this data into something that we can print out. So here, let's go ahead and create a return list is going to be an array list of um, here we have display data type. Okay, so that we store the converted data for. Okay, so we have the data here, we need to go through it one by one. So we're going to say for datum, which is singular for data in data. Okay, and we need to convert this variable datum into um, our display data type. So val ddt, val ddt is going to be display data type. Let's create it with the information that we have. So datum dot um, position. Remember, this needs to be a float. So we're going to say dot to float. And the other one needs to be an integer. Okay, so we're going to say datum dot um, amount to string. Okay, so we have converted our data, then we can simply use the display to display our DDT. And we're going to add our DDT to the return list. So return list dot add DDT. Okay, and finally, outside of the loop, we're going to say return, return list. Okay, so this has converted the data, displayed it and returned it into a list. Okay, so that is our adapter. So obviously, this works fine, but we need to invoke it. So let's go ahead and create a test class adapter test. We're going to create a test function fun adapter test. Okay, so here, we need to start creating our data and calling the adapter. So first of all, I'm going to have a generator is going to be a database what did we call it? Um, database data generator, DDG. Okay, uh, database data generator, then we're going to have the generated data is going to be generator dot generate data, obviously, you can combine this, but but I want to have, a, you know, clearer uh, functionality here, then let's instantiate our adapter data display adapter. Here, we need to pass our data display. So let's go ahead and create uh, data display here. Okay, so we have our adapter, then we simply need to do val convert data is going to be adapter dot convert data. We need to convert the generated data. Okay, so we have our convert data here. Remember, when we call this, this is actually going to be printed out. Okay, so we should see it. Um, so let's stop here. And let's run the code for now and check that the functionality works that the right data is displayed.
Okay, we have 234 and 2723. We should see that uh, printed out in the console. Okay, 234 as floats and 2723 as strings. Okay, so we're just gonna test for that uh, functionality. So let's say assert uh, assertions. Make sure you select the assert j.core one dot assert that um, let's say converted data dot size equals is equal to um, three. So the size needs to be three. And you can, of course, go through these uh, values as well to check. I'm just going to go through one of them. So assertions dot assert that um, convert data of, let's say, the first one, which is actually second, okay, with the index one. So this is zero, this is one. Dot um, index is equal to uh, what should be the first one, 3f, okay, it's a float, remember? And then we also have convert data one of data, it needs to be a string seven. Okay, so we're just checking for the types here as well. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. We should pass our test. Okay, there we go. So we have two, three, and four. This These tests pass. So basically, that is the adapter. It allows us to have a third-party library that we cannot change, we cannot touch. We have our own functionality. In our case was data, but we can have basically any type of functionality as well. And here we convert uh, we adapt our functionality, our data into the required type and use it to call that functionality. Okay, that is basically the adapter uh, design pattern.